Okay, we are live now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our virtual USG alumni talks. We are now live on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. My name is Dania. I work at the American Center Tashkent. And today we will meet with two UGRAD alumni who recently came back from the United States. Let me introduce them to you. Iskandar Suleimanov is a UGRAD finalist, fall 2019. He has graduated from Tashkent Institute of Finance this year with major in finance. While in the U.S., he studied at Kent State University, Ohio, and now works at the Capital Market Development Agency as a junior specialist. Hello, Iskandar. Hi. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Our next speaker, Oman Ochilov, is also a UGRAD finalist for 2019. He majors in petroleum engineering at the branch of the Gupki University in Tashkent. His exchange semester was at the University of Wyoming. Currently, he is commencing his senior year of undergrad studies. Hello, Oman. Hi, everyone. Thanks for introduction, Danya. And today they will be talking about community service in the U.S. Just a quick reminder to our viewers, as this is a live discussion on Facebook and YouTube, feel free to leave your questions in the chat box below, and uh, Omon and Iskandar will answer them throughout this live session. Okay, let's get it started. Iskandar, Omon, the floor is yours. I'm turning it over to you. Thank you, Dania. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are really glad to be here today. Thank you very much for inviting us, for having us here. So let's talk about community service in the U.S. It's been yeah, quite a... Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, sorry. I will be sharing no, our ahead. experience based, based on the UCRAT, I mean, a semester exchange period. Yep, and we just wanted to make it a sort of a special special edition with two you grad with two alumni, and uh, we think that it's gonna be good. Uh, and it's been quite a quite a hard task to come up with a legit topics. So we just uh, chose yeah. community service in U.S. Since you know both Iskandar and me wanted to you know share our experience uh, from you grad. Uh, since it's a it's, it's a big topic uh, in the U.S., so first uh, I'm gonna walk you through the uh, general concept of community service and explain some basic examples of community service. Uh, what types of work are uh, considered is considered to be a community service? Then together with Iskandar, we're gonna talk about benefits of community service. In the mm -hmm. last, uh, I will show some ways of uh, how to find opportunities being a student. Yep, yep, yep. exactly. So let's start. Uh, what is community service? Uh, uh, community service is a non-paying job. It, this is like Wikipedia uh, definition. Community service is a non-paying job performed by one person or a group of people for the benefit of their community or its uh, institutions. The key word here is for the benefit of their community. And this part of the sentence actually defines the whole uh, concept of community service. You do it for the benefit of your community or your institutions for free. Um, what is uh, uh, taken as a community service? So, <clears throat> Some basic examples are improving environment in your community, uh, helping poor by, you know, delivering some food, uh, food, uh, or organizing some contests with, you know, the charity bank that will be uh, contributed to <clears throat> poor uh, to make their situation better, or visiting elderly or orphanage houses at uh, care care houses, just you know, by visiting them by talking to them or by organizing some sort of events for them for free is also considered to be uh, a community service. And this is a non-exhaustive list of uh, the activities, uh, community service activities. Actually, there are so many things that one can do for his community. And uh, we don't uh, usually recognize uh, 
how simple things can also help improve our community. And uh, now let's go to benefits of community service uh, or why is it important? Because this is, I think this is the main question about this topic. Many of us might know about the community service, but uh, not all of us do it. And uh, the, the question is, why is it important? So as a global UGRAD uh, alum, uh, alumni, and I, we both with uh, Iskandar had to commence at least 20 hours of community service. Um, this is just a requirement of global UGRAD. And uh, this, this is done to actually show the value of civic engagement in US uh, society. So I was um, in a state of Wyoming in uh, city Laramie, uh, where the University of Wyoming is located. This is a really good place uh, for a student, really good campus, and it had lots of opportunities uh, to commence to do community service. So for me, as a, an exchange student, as an international student, community service was not some was not only a required task which I would have done anyways, but uh, later I found out that it is a chance to socialize. So being an international student, as I mentioned, uh, you start your life from a scratch, kinda. Uh, you don't have a, you don't know anyone, you don't have any friends. Uh, you just know some contacts of your uh, like uh, coordinators uh, from immigration's office and from academic. Uh, office and that's it uh, so you have to you know socialize and uh, the community service activities is uh, are, are really uh, good places good opportunities to do so so here for example on the picture I am uh, I'm sweeping the the yard of a family uh, you know this, this this event was called October service it, because it was done in October and you know, you just uh, get together with people, you know that you have one purpose and it's much easier to talk to each other. And along the way, while while you, you know, do your job, you know, you ask about each other, you communicate, you talk about your culture, you ask them and it becomes really, you know, uh, the boundaries actually, you know, fade and you become closer to the society. Uh, so usually after the service, the community service uh, activities, the, the campus the, or the organizers, um, you know, you would make some sort of, uh, you know, barbecue, uh, barbecue lunch or some sort of, a, you know, food included event that, again, will bring people closer. And here, for example, we would take some hot dogs or burgers and sit together and just, you know, follow up with the conversations. And this one, for example, is a Halloween Halloween uh, like game night. Uh, so the, the families would bring all of their kids to the place, and uh, I served as a um, as a game facilitator. So I was standing there explaining how to play uh, this game to you know kids, and for every uh, for every score, I would give them some sort of, you know, candy since it's a Halloween. And there I met uh, one, of my, one of my friends, his name was Evan. And later on, he actually invited me to his house in Georgia in another state, uh, which I had to decline, of course, because uh, I had other plans. But uh, the fact that, you know, I met him there uh, during the community service, you know, uh, you know, brought up this opportunity for me, like to go to another state and, you know, uh, be there with his family on uh, Thanksgiving. So th th this was amazing to, to know that, you know, such one event can actually bring you to other people closer. Also, uh, it was a great chance to learn about the culture of Americans. Uh, so, for example, during the October service, uh, you could see pumpkins all over the place. So this is just typical house of a family there. And they spend lots of money, you know, to do, to decorate their houses with, you know, all the you know possible things that will re resemble pumpkin, the the Halloween stuff, and uh, you know, even when you go to the shops, you know, to Walmart, like 
the biggest markets, you know, everything uh, is associated with Halloween, with pumpkins, you know, with Hallows. And even at Starbucks, they would start selling pumpkin powder coffees, which is so weird, but, you know, I liked it. <laughs> uh, so this th this this was one of the takeaways from community service so and on the right uh, I'm, I'm i'm doing a community service with uh, uh, my friends now uh, emily and uh, i don't remember his name sorry <laughs> uh so it was during september and we went to mountains and we just cleaned the place um and i just you know i was uh, a bit surprised why people uh, you know, go to the places and just, you know, do it for free, like, uh, you know, with, with no expectations at all. Uh, they just go and, you know, do something for free and help their community. So when I asked Emily about uh, her opinion, she said, you know, I'm giving back to my community because she was so grateful that uh, this community brought her up, you know, uh, gave her parents opportunities to grow and gave her to the opportunity to grow as a person and she was really grateful for that and that's why she was ready to give back through community service also it was a great chance to improve my skills so on one of the uh, events uh, later in november when thanksgiving was approaching uh there was this uh community service option you know like uh I mean, it's called member service, but uh, they told me that uh, I would go to a shop, like to the Safeway, and I would ask people uh, to donate some products from the from the Safeway. So basically, uh, with girls here, we uh, stu like stood up in front of the en entrance, and uh, like we had this these you know small. A list of you know, products that we needed for a charity charity dinner dinner uh, for for Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, we would ask every every person that was coming in to buy some things from that list and to give to give it you know to, to us so that we could you know then donate it to the organization. And uh, I just was so unsure and you know uh, insecure in the beginning, but you know. Like the more I did it, you know, the more I started becoming more, I mean, I started becoming more confident and I started, you know, asking people without any, you know, uh, complexes, without any fear. And I, I don't know, I just, I just became more confident in myself in selling and persuading people. And believe it or not, we made, I don't know, we made more than $500, $500 of donations that day. It was amazing. So that was really, really good chance for me. And uh, it's gonna your part. Hi guys, uh, once more. Uh, I was in uh, Kent State. It is located in Kent, Ohio, in the northern western part of the United States. You can see the map and the picture of me. Uh, next slide, please. All right, uh, I, I will. I will continue and highlight one of the like ben benefits of each, uh, community service. Uh, first, about the community service, uh, as Oman mentioned, we had to do uh, twenty hours of volunteering in uh, community services. Uh, being honest with you, I thought uh, I will do the 20 hours and that's it. I have to do it like as quick as possible. But later when once I like got into it, I really got the meaning why uh, the organ organization or the world learning requires us to, to do the 20 hours. So uh, while I was doing the research for this uh, today's talk, I found a very interesting fact that you can see on your screens. So according to the statistics, people who do uh, voluntary volunteer works like more often feel uh, happier than the average people. And I think that's that's really true because I'm telling it because uh, I felt it. Um, there is a like 
straight correlation by what you lay, what you earn, or what you study, and what you give back to the place or to your community by doing something. And once you feel it, uh, I think it's just a feeling that you have to feel. And uh, it's called like achieving happiness by helping others, and that's one of the benefits of community service. Yeah, we can go on. And uh, that was the actually the question that I asked during my final entry for this program. Like, how, even if I get accepted, how I'm going to find the community service opportunities? So uh, actually, it's so so easy. Like. It's super easy because uh, American uh, universities, uh, as you know, like attract uh, international students by their social life plus the, their community. So there are some common ways. First, the community engaged learning. Uh, I will talk about it later. Uh, and the second one is joining student organization and then uh, find your own way of doing Good for community. So uh, talking about the student organizations, uh, for, in my university, there were like about 40, no, no, 400, sorry, 400 student organizations. And uh, when I found that, I was like, really? How's that possible? But it, it actually is true. Uh, by the way, Oman, were there any clubs or student organizations in your university? Oh, yeah, like a bunch of them, you know, like... Uh... In, yeah, yeah. In my specialty, only in my specialty, there were like three big organizations. But you know, just you have to consider every school there because so many schools, so many faculties. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. And the 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 presidents or the organizers of those clubs, they themselves do some volunteer works. For example, like some weekends, they the like on did they clean the cities or towns where the university campus is located and that they organize the charity events and the others so by joining student organization you can like benefit twice by doing community service and uh, by doing something for your professional or academic career uh, another way is you can find your own way of doing community service uh, i remember one day i was like preparing for my term exams uh when arab girl came to me and I, she was saying something i was sitting on my headphones and that she was uh, like collecting money for poor people and uh, poor people in the local hospital the, it was so easy so you can just download the app uh, i'm pretty sure there are a lot of apps that you can just go fund me for example and uh, you can do it just by yourself, by like walking through the campus or library, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, it's not that hard. The only thing is just the will, as they say. If there is a will, there is a way. So we're uh, going to community engaged learning. Uh, that's what I did. Could you please click the next slide, bro? Yeah. Uh, it's actually a really big platform and uh, as far as I know and uh, according to my research there are a lot of community engaged learning like centers or organizations almost in every university in the United States so uh, it's the how it's defined on the on the internet uh, community engaged learning is a form of education in which students engage in activities that address human and community needs together with structured opportunities intentionally designed to promote student learning and development. So uh, it's kind of organized like set of community service opportunities. Like you can find uh, like helping to Poor people or old people who live alone, you can help uh, homeless people. Uh, you can help if you study nurse, you can do some uh, voluntary job at local hospitals and many, many other options. Uh, I think unfortunately now we can we can't go through the links, right, bro? But that's okay. Uh, I was going to show some examples. 
So, uh, community engaged learning I mean, I is can. what really helped me, and that's how. Uh, if it's if we can, it's okay. If we can't, uh, we can just go to the next slide. It will take uh, a bit time. One sec. Um, no, actually, it's uh, it's it, it will take more than needed. So let's just go. Yeah. That, Do you want me that, to go to the next okay. slide? Yeah, yeah, we can go. So uh, those are the some pictures from my experience in the first picture you can see that, that uh, i'm doing a volunteer work at campus kitchen project uh, what we did was we prepared the meal for homeless people in the in neighborhood uh, every every tuesday and thursday there were like menu for that, that was prepared by the chef of course and we just went there helped to prepare the sandwiches or some days we even made some soups uh it's called soup kitchen i guess a lot of people are familiar with uh, it's one of the yeah, famous volunteer activities have you ever been involved quite in famous brother yeah yeah like uh, i actually went to one of the soup kitchens yeah, yeah. And, uh, in laramie if you guys they... are planning yeah if you guys are planning to study or like in, in the united states you you, you do definitely have to do that and the Kentwick cafe community meal it was the the second community service that i was involved uh we made to one of the there was a like place for older people in the, near our campus. Uh, there lived people above 65, I guess, that the government supports them with the money. But uh, still, it's not enough for a living. So like twice a week, twice in a week, uh, we went there and uh, I think um, we have some issues uh with the connection oh. so yeah. we lost his kinder we lost his kinder i think um yeah he's joining yeah yeah okay, okay. so Skandar is back can i hear sorry sorry for technical problems yeah okay no you're good you're good i can picture yeah uh, it was for older people, and uh, that's where I understand what is the community service. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because of the technical issues, I most of my photos were deleted from my phone, so I couldn't find the proper ones. Uh, we served the old people a meal. So after a meal, we used to sit with them, eat together, talk about life, talk about everything, what they did, how was their studies, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, as Omar mentioned, it's a community service is a really good way to socialize and understand the culture. You will feel the difference when you when you start your studies, when you first like go to big cities, like you, you come from uh, other side of the world but by by doing the community service i understood that even the people races religion are different uh, we all are humans and in this digitalized world we the humanity saves the world so uh, when we talked about the life we, we shared the same thing we share same like emotions uh, the people used to hug us and uh, pay thanks like time like a lot of times even after the, the community service they invited us to their it's not even flat it's it's their rooms uh, that's what makes the, everything special i guess and the third photo there is a it was in food bank how much do you know what is food bank i mean it's, it's pretty famous term in the states I, I I really I mean I guess but uh, I haven't really come across 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually the, it's the food bank, like where stores of a lot of like eating, no, not eating meals and fruits are saved. Like packed food, you know, like like cans. Yeah, when people uh, make a lot of donations, there's some time when people really don't need it. So you need some space to save them for like for a while until they get like separated and delivered so the local authorities like set some locations where those foods can be saved or those donations so i was fascinated to visit to those to this place it's actually like in the size of one soccer stadium like it's really big with big fridges there are a lot of meat uh, stuff and a lot of donations uh, in the October, there was a Make a Difference Day. I think it's the last Saturday of uh, October, if I'm not mistaken. So I decided to spend the day there. So on that day, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we separated uh, almost four tons of meat, like different, different meat. And That's I impressive. was only in the meat section. That, that it's really a lot of meat. Yeah, yeah, bro. It, it was unforgettable experience. Uh, this is this all. What I did was organized by community engaged learning, and uh, even if you go in. Okay. We, okay. Well, we lost you. again. Yeah, uh, I can it take on for a while. Like sure. you know. Yeah, like we talk, we kind of talk about like soup kitchen, and soup kitchen is really. Yeah, I'm, I'm really. Stuff, I'm but, really but, oh, here you are. <laughs> yeah, it's good that go. Uh, I'm really sorry, guys. I think I'm having a problem with my internet. No, I'm provider. backing you here. I'm like, I'm your backup plan. No, I'm, no, I'm, that, I'm I appreciate. Kidding. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, that what I was talking about. This all were organized by Community Engaged Learning Center. So, if you plan to do some community service or volunteer work, you can look for this on your campus or on your colleges or universities website. I'm pretty sure there will be some information. And the, the, you can click the next slide. Yeah, this is just a sample. Records mm -hmm. of uh, like this is what we submitted to word learning. You can see the how many hours and where I spent. So I was it's kind of I have this I have a one I have one question here. Like I was yeah, quite yeah. surprised how organized and how 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 neat you know the, this this report is because in my case yeah I don't know maybe because I went to you know many places I had to kind of collect reports you know from separate places like sometimes i even took a photo of you know this handwritten report and <laughs> like uh, why do you have so great uh, report uh, I, I think that's that's when you like apply for the community engaged learning it's what they gave me like you have uh -huh. online profile and everything is recorded and you're the coordinator just submits that or like confirms that you were there and the, done this service at, at the end of the day. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. It looks, it looks good, you know? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh yeah, that, that's, like, that's all for today, I guess. Uh, we tried our best to do this and uh, I think we have some questions, right? I see it in thank the you. comment section. Yes, uh, thank you both for the wonderful presentation. We have Hello. questions okay, coming both from Facebook and YouTube. Okay, the first question from Lazizbek Kahramanov. Were there options for halal food after community service? Iskandar, I think this is your question because uh, you served uh, in the meat section, <laughs> what do you think? Uh, as far uh, I think he's asking about like, is there anything related to halal food service, right? That's the question. 
uh, what are the options for help? So if Lazis Beck would like to clarify his question, he can do that. Uh, well, we will answer the next question, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's what we can do, yeah. Okay, from Gulnas Vladigevrova. Okay, how did you travel around the US? Did you have enough time and money to travel? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's kind of, kind of pretty common. We question. both can. I think we both can can answer this question. So let's yeah, yeah. do it turn by turn. Just, just yeah, yeah, let's do it turn by turn. Uh, do you want to start? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I traveled around the U.S. Um, uh, by plane. Like, uh, if you book if you book your flight tickets like at least one month uh, prior to your flight, it's quite cheap. And um, uh, the time and money, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, you, I mean, you, I, I had quite enough time during holidays and during, you know, weekends and enough money from my stipend to actually travel to, uh, to you know, to many places to, you know, I traveled to Los Angeles, to Chicago, to, you know, to Denver, um, you know, I've been to Washington DC. Well, that's, that was part of uh, the program itself, but uh, overall, yeah, I had, Quite quite a lot of chances to travel. Scan that. Yeah, uh, mostly I traveled by by car because it's the cheapest way, and plus you will see other places on your way to your like final destination. Uh, I, I I did travel to both Chicago and New York by car. Uh, in bonus, I had a chance to to Pennsylvania and Indiana. So my advice. Just save money that you get they that you give for a month monthly living uh, and find somebody to drive you some other state or find might make a friend from another state so that you can visit on the Thanksgiving holiday or during the break break periods. What I wanna what I wanna add is that it's it's a it was quite of a surprise for me to find out that, that America is a nation of a drive of drivers. And uh, like without a car, you're dead. <laughs> you can't really move from your place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and exactly. even to go to even to go to the nearest international airport, I had to find. I had to talk to so many students just to ask them to drive me to and from the uh, to airport. And this was the most difficult part in traveling, I guess. But besides that, no. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Lazis Beck added to his question. Uh, he meant for your eating. So that's what he says. No, for your own eating, if you had, let me go back to his initial question. Okay, what are there options for halal food after community service for your eating? Oh. The, actually, you can do the community service in the mosques because, as you know, the America is very diverse. So you can do your community service in one of local uh, mosques where Muslims pray. So on these places, uh, you are offered, of course, halal food. So it's not going to be really a problem. Plus, there are a lot of societies like Arabic, Turkish, and uh, people come from uh, for not from uh, Arabic countries. So you will find some communities and there are the, uh, the whole food is what, like go for it, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, I answered you're, the question. You're, you're right, Iskandar, like, you know, I think in any, you know, big university that a UGRAD finalist is, uh, you know, attached to, uh, you know, there is an, an Arabic community where you can find halal food. Thank you. Uh, Gulnaz Jadigerova is asking, wasn't the study at your college difficult? Uh, it's it's yeah, not if you do everything on time and uh, as they say, it's not, it's not really difficult. But uh, of course, if you're, if you're going for an exchange, there will be some like Kind of surprises for you because uh, I was a senior and I chose senior year classes, so I had to study what they studied 
till that period. But uh, if you work on yourself for, for a month, you will adapt. It won't take long. And it's really up to, to your major, I guess. Okay, thank you. Would you like can to I, add something? Yeah, um, yeah, can I add? Yeah, you know what I found uh, about their education uh, compared to our education is that their education is not, uh, you know, less difficult. It can be as difficult as our education, but it's uh, like like more simple. I think, like, I mean, you got it, right? Like, it's not less difficult, but it can be simpler. Uh, I mean that you can, you know, you have more resources to explore your subject. You have, you know, more, you know, professionals to ask from. And, you know, uh, just the way they teach is, I think, uh, more comp like straightforward. This is what I found. And that's why maybe I didn't, uh, take it as, you know, difficult. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next question from Laziz Vic. Could you find any pay jobs or internships related to your own special specialty of study? Or here's, uh, it's gonna be, or did you have to do general labor, cooking or serving at a restaurant, cleaning and the like to cover your extended tours? So it's quite All right, long. do you want to ask for a Yeah. So, like, could you find any paid jobs or internships related to your own specialty or study? Uh, I mean, I'm not quite sure what Lazizbek means. Like, after I came back or like during I was at UGRAD, because um, because after I came uh, back from the US, uh, I I wasn't really uh, like searching for. Uh, relate my specialty related uh, internship, but I found an internship, uh, not in my specialty. <laughs> okay, uh, let me try to uh, answer to the question. If you're asking about uh, community service, uh, paid internships or doing that is related, doing something related to your major is not a community service. Community service is something giving back to your community, unless you're a nurse or like studying for education. In our case, I studied finance and Nomon studied petroleum engineer. We did uh, accept those things for community service, like soup kitchen and uh, helping cleaning the city, for example. But uh, in our program in the UGRAD, you're not allowed to work where they pay, but you can do internships, of course. If it's, uh, if it's like unpaid internship, yes, you can do. Okay. Yeah, thank you. To, to work during your grad is prohibited. <laughs> okay, next question from the US Embassy, Tashkent. Do either of you continue to volunteer in your local communities here in Uzbekistan? Yeah, that, that's actually a really good question. Uh, really good one. After that, <laughs> yeah, uh, after, after coming back from your grad, I had that impact from community service and uh, I found one opportunity that there were like well, a Eurasian Foundation, I guess, was organizing Central Asian Youth Leadership Academy, and I applied for this. What it is like, uh, what they are focusing for is to help communities to develop, and I applied. And then now uh, I'm I'm studying there, and plus I'm uh, like working on one project uh, here to recycle the plastic materials, which is like, which is not a, that visible problem for our community right now, but it's gonna be in the future. So uh, I kind of started in my neighborhood to like reschool children. So they, uh, it was before pandemic, unfortunately. Now the, they collect the uh, plastics and uh, there are places where they buy them. By collecting, uh, they can sell. Like they can make money, and in the future, maybe we will. Uh, like, uh, I would prefer not. I would prefer to keep it myself. But we're planning to recycle it our, ourselves and make some products. Okay. Thank you. Oman, do you have anything to add? Uh, so far, to be honest, I didn't have a chance uh, to volunteer, but uh, 
like uh, after you grad, uh, I found I discovered that uh, uh, you know my motivation to give back to my community uh, like rose like uh, very much. Uh, I didn't really do community service, but I was uh, like willingly sharing my knowledge and experience. You know, like no matter about like doesn't matter about like whatever uh, about UGRAD, uh, you know, my specialty maybe or leadership, time management. Uh, you know, I was doing lots of seminars and webinars, uh, you know, to audiences, uh, both at my university and, you know, uh, outside of my university. But uh, I hope that uh, soon um, uh, we'll get a chance with, with my university uh, friends, we'll, we'll get a chance to go to orphanage houses or uh, care houses and to don we'll, be, we'll be able to donate some, some things. Awesome. Thank you. Next question from Jamshid Ahmad Aliyev. Thank you guys for sharing your experiences. What is, the main, what is the main purpose of doing community service for an exchange student in the U.S.? How did it change you as one member of society? This is another UGRAT uh, alum, well, like. Jamshid Ahmad Aliyev. Yep. Would you like to answer this question? Skanda, do you have an answer? Yeah, I, I think main purpose is uh, first of all to to get acquainted with the culture. I think uh, that is purpose and learn about American people, American students. Uh, and uh, what was the second point? Uh, what did it change? One member of society, uh, I think uh, you you start feeling like your responsibility in front of your community, you know, because uh, of course uh, we study, we work, but sometimes we have to give back some something to people. We have to benefit others too, and uh, I think that is the main goal of doing community service. I totally agree. Okay, next question from Durdona is wondering, can graduate students try this program as well? I guess no, right? Yeah, unfortunately, it's just the uh, undergraduate exchange program. Yeah, you need to be university or institutes. Graduate. Okay, uh, next question from Aziza. Israelova, was it possible to attend the classes out of the established program itself, like just to attend the classes for yourself? So, I think you have to register to the classes that you want to, uh, if it's your major, but attending the class itself, uh, I don't think it was possible in my in my university but i don't know about other universities because uh the professors have the list of students who are actually registered for the class so even if you even if you are like if you, you can visit to the lecture you can have the materials for the class yeah okay thank you Next question from Abdurrahman Walijanov. What is the best aspect of studying in America? Tell me three best aspects and what differences are there between studying in America and in Uzbekistan? Okay, uh, Skana, let's do it one by one. Like uh, me one, you one, then again, maybe me one. Okay, I think, I, yeah, I, I think, I think, for, I, I, for me, the best aspect, one of the best aspects was that uh, the lectures and uh, the classes are really, uh, are of really high quality. Um, you know, you really get what you need, uh, like during your job. Like I, I took, um, I took uh, two uh, like senior classes and 
I still use them, you know, like uh, in every class that I have here now, because the 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 the, the knowledge uh, are are so skill centered, is so skill centered that you know you can use it throughout you know, your whole your whole career. That was one of the best parts. Skandar, what was your Skandar. best aspect? Uh, what I want to add, I think uh, it's more focused on the, as almost said, more practical knowledge. You actually learn, uh, you actually learn what you need to in your job. Plus, uh, it's more interactive. You can, uh, you can like go into the discussions. Uh, you can sometimes debate with your classmates, which actually makes the atmosphere life. You don't just sit like monotony classes and listen to the professor. Professors, like most of them give you a chance to say what, say what you think and they, they ask your opinions. So there may be some times you think that you're right and ask from professor, uh, he or she is not going to just ignore you. It will it will be explained like step by step or one by one. That's what I like. And okay. one one more one more thing that I liked about uh, like U.S. studies is that uh, the study is individual. It's you're not you're not uh, attached to a group of people, but rather you are on your own, and like you have your own like cabinet, uh, individual cabinet, like uh, like blogging cabinet. Uh, on internet, and uh, you can track your marks there, your exams, and you can choose the, the subjects that you want. Like you can, you know, put your schedule according to your, you know, time schedule. Uh, this, you know, this flexibility was uh, a great takeaway. Thank you. Next question from Nazmahan Alim Khanova. Would you be applying for masters in the US? Yes. What do you say? I want. Yep. How about you? Stand up. Yeah, of course. Uh, I would love to study a master's degree in the United States. Okay, thank you. Next question from Lazis Beck. Uh, did you, or, uh, or did you have another additional semester after completing your grad semester? So, oh, sorry, this is was the okay. The first question: Were you able to transfer the credits of the courses you took in the U.S. to your university in Uzbekistan? And here is the, it's continuing. Mm -hmm. Or did you have to do another additional semester after completing your grad semester? Okay. Is the question clear? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. Do you want to answer, Roma? Yeah, in my case, uh, so I couldn't transfer the credits because I study at uh, Russian University here. So I, I, I lost one year and uh, now I'm doing my senior year. Uh, yeah. The, I study, I graduated from the local university. So it was my second exchange that I just, not all of them were like transferred directly. There were some courses that I had to retake the final exam. Uh, I came here, I, I, we came back here in December and the finals were on February. So I had two months to prepare for the finals. I took like 40% of them, I, I passed. So there was not a problem. And uh, as far as I know from my friends, it's really up to the university. Like if the university staff is supportive, if they understand, if they want you to like study abroad, they will they will let you transfer the credits. But you just have to retake to some exams. Cool. Okay, thank you. Um, I think there was a last question, and it's actually time to wrap up. Uh, Thank you both for your wonderful conversation and this great presentation for uh, sharing your experience uh, in com community service in the US. It was really interesting to uh, learn about it. And I want to thank all our viewers for watching us today, for joining us. And I hope to see you all next time on USJ Alumni Talks.
Thank you, Omar. Thank you, Iskandar. Thank you. Thank you, too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Stay safe and healthy. You too.